Okay. Sorry to be late. Um, it's a new computer that uh, tried to make uh, work in these last days, and it took me a bit of time exactly yesterday. Um, I will talk about um, actually some work that I've, do, I've done these last 10 years uh, that involved uh, uh, Blender game engine and Blender in general uh, for quite a lot. Um, so uh, I'll start to present me uh, a bit. Uh, my, my name is Olivier Meunier. I'm also known on the internet by the nickname of Olme. Uh, I am a new media artist. It means uh, also called uh, uh, art numérique in the French part of the uh, of the world, and uh, which means that I actu actually I mix a lot of different uh, media and a lot of different hard techniques uh, through uh, digital mediums, uh, computers, but also. Uh, microcontrollers, sensors, uh, video projection, video uh, feeds, sound, uh, Wi-Fi uh, links, and uh, uh, networks in general. And uh, I mix a lot of all these techniques together in a lot of different projects. Each time it's different. There is uh, uh, a lot of um, excitement in, in that field because uh, in that way, exactly, each project has a lot of uh, new uh, fiddling to, to, to do. Uh, so um, I can be also seen as a, some, some sort of uh, artist hacker. Um, and uh, with this others, we have um, founded a, a, an association in Belgium, which is called FLAT for Free Libre Art and Technology. And, uh, where we talk about, we, uh, we made some workshop, we develop, we um, uh, made some education uh, about the techniques we use and the project we make. We help other artists to do their works also. Um, and uh, it's in the name, we use it, we do it ex only with a free libre or with a big, um, uh, mind toward free libre software and culture. Uh, why I, I will talk about it a bit later. Uh, so here are the projects uh, we will talk about uh, today. So um, the first is uh, uh, ten years, more, a bit more than ten years ago, and um, it's a part where we will come come to the the last uh, project. I'm presenting today, and you will see there is a, um, uh, a link between all these, uh, these works. Um, so, and uh, Atera World, it's uh, uh, actually the first uh, big project I had uh, funded by public uh, funds. Um, it, uh, it involved actually the idea of having uh, the control of uh, an avatar in a world, in a virtual world, but uh, in a space with a projection, like in a cave uh, that you use in, a, in the laboratory for VR research and uh, car presentations, but in a public space and having uh, a control uh, touchless and without any interface to take over by the public. So you could have uh, a, pass on, a passerby coming into the virtual space and controlling the, the, the avatar without uh, having to take any controller in hand or something like that. Um, I used at the time, um, part of my system used pure data for the video tracking that I use. Uh, I use a technique with an IR infrared camera uh, and video, uh, infrared video detection. And uh, I use Unreal Tournament for uh, 3D, uh, as a 3D engine. The problem uh, I had at the time, and that actually uh, led to the uh, abandon of the project, or it's uh, put aside, 
was that in the, in the in real tournament at the time, I could not reroute easily the control for the, the character and have the uh, the smooth movement I, I, I want to to do. Um, also, it was really hard to modify the game um, philo philosophy or the, 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 the game uh, uh, really uh, purpose. And uh, even for some sp stupid things like uh, uh, giving away the, the arms, the virtual arms of the, of the character that you will have in this uh, game engine, it was pretty hard to do uh, for, for a simple projects. So, and also, uh, as it was a proprietary uh, so, uh, software, it has its own um, kind of uh, files, and it revealed not to be really easy to port for the future and port to new engine and new possibilities. So, um, it comes after, uh, yeah, I can have a small video of it here. Um, I'm really sorry for the, the bad uh, the bad quality of it. You, but you understand a bit the the idea of having the control of the avatar uh, through the the position actually of the, the the person in front of the of the screen. Um, I will not. Uh, has too much time on this. Um, maybe you talk about what afterward I did um, uh, with the Blender uh, and the uh, Blender game engine. Um, so after uh, these problems I had with this project, I, I decided to really look at what was possible with the free software only. Um, it was quite a hard time for me because at that time a lot of uh, these t tools were really hard to, to take over and only actually the Blender game engine was uh, quite easy to, to take for a small team and also super open to, to do whatever you want on top of uh, the basic uh, uh, functions of it. So. The, the the next project was uh, a dome projection with 360 degree uh, video, interactive video done in 2006. It was commissioned by Photon Records, which was a uh, um, recording uh, 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 company for uh, electronic music, but also videos and stuff in Brussels. It was filmed in a, a, a quite big, uh, uh, Lady Grey, Ladybug um, a camera that was uh, combining six cameras in for, for, for this. Um, we implemented actually the Paul Bork method to make a, a dome, which was basically after that uh, re-implemented by Dalai into the, the game engine for dome projection and uh, the, the dome uh, projection you have now for uh, the the 3D, the 360 uh, uh, rendering. Um, and uh, actually, at that time, we used the development fund we had for the project to fund a developer to integrate the video texture into the game engine. Uh, it, it, we have to mention also that it was specialized with a cryophonic auto, uh, interactive uh, system only with the, the, the Blender uh, game engine through that was uh, enough to to drive uh, for uh, an area of four speakers uh, and a specialized uh, uh, specialized sound in, uh, installations. So um, this was me into the the dome, which is an inflatable dome uh, with a mirror. Um, and the, the projector, and uh, I can show you a video of it. Yeah. 
also a bit sorry about the the quality of that. Uh, it's for having an ID. Uh, it was filmed at the time with a bad, bad uh, camera, but uh, it was a one-week experiment in a, an art center. Uh, it was quite fun also to do this because uh, we had to, to hack into uh, a building to get into the, the uh, work elevator. Uh, this was a building in complete renovation, so we took the, the, the side elevator the workers use to, uh, to mount to, uh, on, on top of the building, and we filmed the up and down movement of it. So afterward, uh, the users could, uh, with a gamepad, uh, turn away the, the, the view the public had in the, in the space. Um, the sound I have on this video is really bad, but um, as I don't have much time. So after that, um, went the uh, project I, uh, I made with uh, another uh, organization in, in Brussels uh, named Okno. Uh, the idea was to film uh, some uh, video cameras uh, on time-lapse matter in different spaces and, to, and uh, bring them together into, into a virtual space where actually the time could be uh, uh, deconstructed. Um, so it gives uh, a, some kind of a cave, a cheap one, with uh, three projectors. And uh, you can visit uh, uh, some of uh, uh, a really interesting place like that uh, with a gesture position in, into the, the space. Uh, I also have a video of it, which is a bit better in that case. So, um, that time actually uh, the problem for me was really to pass my complete uh, work uh, tools in a free software uh, manner um, because I had also a different work with uh, commercial uh, clients and, uh, and stuff and I, I used uh, other tools that I won't name at, at the time that permitted to make uh, 3D models and uh, scenes uh, and sceneries on the internet. And uh, from one day to the other, the companies at the time decided that these modules that everybody had on this computer uh, could not be uh, published anymore, used or buy, and uh, they closed uh, the forums about of the developers that uh, use these tools, and they closed uh, basically a complete market of uh, uh, some uh, interesting uh, things that were happening in the internet at the time. And I was actually using it for clients uh, to make uh, like a interactive visualizations and uh, I also was kind of pissed off by this and decided really not to use any uh, proprietary software anymore because in a, in a very uh, different ways it's completely uh, blocking me for the future and having uh, this kind of uh, uh, contract on me is not possible because it would mean that uh, I could put myself out of the game for uh, a long time uh, after having um, worked on the technology for uh, a lot of time. So uh, this one, uh, this system, uh, th this presentation uh, or installation was filmed with camera, video camera on the uh, remote uh, places, uh, stitches together and uh, the, the video texture actually was 
part of the, uh, of the development was uh, contributing to uh, the Blender uh, code and put in, uh, in the Blender trunk by Benoit Bolze that was paid by the, the, the project. And uh, we use also pure data to uh, uh, c uh, make the, the, the video t uh, uh, capture of the movement of the, the, the people. Um, these are the, the images of uh, the, the project that looks like at the time. Here is an object project that is not so interactive or actually it's less visible that you interact with it, but it's a, it's a video mapping of a, a, a small hut uh, that looks like uh, have been uh, made in a garden um, of people re re reusing uh, pl uh, uh, planks and uh, uh, pieces of uh, houses to, to make their garden. Um, the idea was to uh, have an installation about permaculture and uh, the new way we could uh, rethink about uh, the, the landscape and uh, the reuse of objects and uh, the relation to herd and to, to uh, uh, the agriculture. Uh, it was made as an immersive display of different uh, places. Uh, all the different uh, parts of the image are uh, also uh, video time lapse taken from different uh, garden of permaculture and uh, are actually uh, interactive for some of them. Uh, the one on the on the hut is uh, interactive because there is a, a a Kinect camera that tracks the position of uh, the uh, the viewer on top of uh, and uh, that gives the impression of uh, some kind of transparency of reflection into the in the windows of uh, the, uh, the the of this hut, uh, and inside of it you have also uh, some video of uh, uh, the ground living and not. Uh, as a dead uh, ground, that, like in uh, the big fields we have today, where uh, the, 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 the landscape is dead because of too much chemicals. The idea is that the hurt is a living place. and So everything is done with a blender uh, game engine, actually, with one computer with ha which has uh, three uh, video output on a big projector on the space, and which is mapping uh, in real time the the whole space uh, with two two instances of uh, Blender, and uh, that are everything is also um, <laughs> was a, a bit tricky to set up because the the computer was supposed to start up with the the electricity on the morning and shut down by the electricity at the, at the evening. And so for the one year, this computer was just uh, uh, started and, and stopped uh, like that, like a light. And, uh, but everything worked at the end. It uh, was unattended for more than a year and uh, worked perfectly. Uh, where are we? Okay. So, uh, yes, it was done. Uh, this little bit of uh, the, the, the facts behind that, done on Ubuntu with uh, uh, Dalai and uh, uh, Benoit Bose. Uh, I don't know if he's here, it's there. Um, that helped to fix uh, the Parax view, uh, on the viewport. Uh, we use Oscoliton and uh, Pi OSC. Uh, also, with Artem Bankiski, Dalai Felintu, Mario May, uh, we worked together on the uh, artist, Blender Artist Forum to, to, to fix that uh, the OSC. This is uh, so the, the, um, uh, this uh, protocol of communication between application that you can use. It's uh, normally used for sound, but it's really uh, interesting. And it's used by, uh, by Pure Data, and here 
uh, we fix it for for uh, uh, for Blender to to control the Kinect and Lunch is a uh, it's a small uh, Python software tool which is served as a watchdog for um, like orchestrating all your application together and be sure that when something is starting the other one has started too and uh, not the reverse. Uh, and uh, it was also filmed with free software. Actually, we use uh, uh, webcams attached on, uh, at that time, uh, uh, Beagle board. Uh, so it's like the Raspberry Pi, but uh, a few years back, uh, that we placed in the gardens and that filmed automatically for, for uh, days uh, in a, here's the, the agreed, uh, acknowledgments. And then now, um, the <laughs> last part where I can explain a bit uh, the system I came up about uh, from this to the VR uh, world. Uh, so you have seen this uh, installation with a big screen where you are in the front of it. And basically, I was thinking about just taking these installations and putting them into a, a, a VR um, headset. And it appears that really it works super well. And it reduced motion sickness compared to, for example, the, the, uh, with a the joystick or uh, with other kind of uh, um, uh, rude uh, navigation system. Uh, it has a, it happens to leave you some kind of uh, freedom of, mo of movement like a room size uh, movement but uh, interestingly also is giving you always the the invite to, the invite to go just straight ahead and not turning around and not uh, uh, make you, uh, making you entangled by your cables uh, what you see often um, it's also a very natural way to, to manage your, uh, your movement into, a, into a, a virtual world. I can, uh, I, I have made demonstrations and people just like, in a few seconds, uh, really uh, uh, understand the system are, and are happy with it, even with uh, kids, actually. Um, it's uh, also probably simple to implement with any possible uh, system uh, to see. Uh, I have implemented it in Blender in a very simple way because I'm, uh, I'm more an artist and, or I'm a hacker, so I combine things well together, but I'm not really a developer that go deep into the code and that can uh, really debug things uh, really deep. So uh, I just used the Blender game engine, which is kind of simple also to, to work with that has this Python uh, implementation and uh, that permit to have me uh, all things together. Uh, so I've developed it with the Blender game engine, but it's probably possible and we will do it uh, with other uh, systems like uh, WebVR and uh, I don't know. Um, so here it is, the, <laughs> the simple uh, system actually is that you take uh, uh, your position in the space in uh, in uh, in, com in like in uh, in a uh, part from a reference point that you take it in the, in the beginning, and then from that, the idea is simply that uh, if you go forward, you you will make your um, your world going forward, like you are on a, on a platform that will move with you, and uh, turning your head will make your platform turning uh, slightly less fast than you uh, toward this position. And basically what it's going to do is to uh, make you feel like you have some kind of a body into the space, which is a bit more slow than yourself, but it's not a problem. It's something that you are accommodating uh, really fast. Uh, and what it's permitting is that basically it makes the virtual world where you have a movement and the real world here, uh, where basically you don't have a movement. You are just in front of your computer. You can't. Uh, you, you don't want to bump onto onto it or on the wall. 
So you mix be be between the two physics also. Um, and uh, the body, uh, I've made some research also, looked at the papers um, and uh, research into the university before. And basically you, you found that the, bod the body is also uh, uh, I can do that. Uh, when you go to in a, in a boat, when you go in a, in a train, uh, there is also this system that permits you not to be uh, sick into this, uh, this, these places. So, video. Where is it? Yeah. That's the paper. Uh -huh. So a fast uh, re recaps of this, and then a small demonstration with me in front of the uh, of the. In front of the screen, where you see what I'm, I'm seeing, and uh, aside you can see our video uh, reference camera that is linked to the space like it is in the reality. Um, so la there I'm uh, just uh, recording the, the reference place and then now I can play. So it's basically a really simple system here that is that has no uh, like weights or um, like uh, tweenings in uh, any of the direction or forces applied. It's really uh, it's really direct and uh, la linear, but uh, there is a lot of things you can add on top of that. Having uh, like jumping is for uh, adding uh, actions. Uh, you can have. Uh, uh, acceleration, you can have also some way to um, uh, enable or disable the, the movement uh, in a software way and, and stuff like that. But it's just a basic system. And here is the, the application into two new projects that I'm working on. One which is in a, with an artist, uh, 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 sound artist, uh, working both by doing uh, electronic music and uh, DJing, but also working a lot for theaters and with uh, um, uh, yeah, that would have been cool with sound, but uh, <laughs> the video will be published on the web. Uh, it's not so much a problem because this is really an infancy. Um, the idea is to have a uh, synesthetic world where the world is reacting to the music, but also uh, creating part of the music by the physics and the reaction of the of the object and uh, your action into it. So you can uh, visit it into VR. But uh, the idea is also that it's a, it's a concert, so we can do it uh, in live with uh, ourselves in a room. Uh, playing the, the parameters, uh, sending uh, the, uh, audio streams, and uh, playing with an audience which is dis uh, dispersed. And uh, also we can uh, use the same, uh, r the, the same session to make a dome projection with the public and have uh, so a live session with the public and, uh, and a VR audience at a, in a distance. Um, uh, so here, uh, this is a, busy, a, a, a basic uh, test we made with uh, sound, which is driving the animation of some uh, object, which are itself also uh, subject to physics, and so it makes them quite alive. And I'm visiting the space here, so just using my position in the, in the place. And here it's another project I have with a, a friend, which is a painter, a really good painter. Uh, and where I'm building some kind of a weird, uh, uh, a weird place or a weird apartment, a weird house, 
where his paintings are presented in to, uh, uh, different ways that are not possible in reality. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so this is a really more classical uh, walk through uh, situation uh, where the paintings are put in scene. So this is uh, also something that I presented into uh, uh, a gallery where the, pr the painting were presented into, into the same place. And so the visitors of the, of the gallery were invited to, to try and to visit this extension to the real gallery. And uh, they were quite, uh, quite amazed by it, I, I think. And uh, they were... Um, also quite at ease uh, with the system. And some people that were also, that I invited because I knew they know about this uh, kind of uh, VR uh, movement we see now and the, the technology uh, they have tried a lot. And they came and tried this uh, and said it was really uh, appealing as a, as a way to, to visit places. So, uh, yeah, that's the ending credits. Um, and so this is a system I think uh, is possible to use by a lot of people. I am um, uh, actually releasing uh, the paper explaining the, the, the system uh, uh, probably today or tomorrow. I, I just didn't have the time. Um, and uh, probably a demo also for Blender. Um, I would like also to, is, if it's possible, to present you the demo uh, a bit upstairs, one of uh, this time just after. Uh, I have to say again that uh, free software could be a bit uh, more spread and that these video drivers <laughs> <laughs> could be uh, a bit more easy to to uh, uh, to work with because I lost uh, I lost a lot of time uh, with that and uh, yes <laughs> I hope you can uh, you can see it tomorrow, uh, today but uh, thank you and um, if there is any question. What was used to actually track the person in the, the square? Ah, okay, so, uh, so we can discuss. Uh, what is used actually is the tracker from the Oculus. Basically, the, that's uh, the interest of it, is that uh, any uh, uh, helmet that has a position tracker can use this, uh, uh, this system. Uh, so it's the... The, the, the infrared camera that po that uh, get the position of the of the headset. But it can work also. Uh, actually, I, you, I try uh, uh, before the DK2 was out. I used uh, the DK1 with a, uh, a Kinect to associate the position of the skeleton where the head should be in the in the game. And it worked pretty well. Actually, uh, it was a bit weird because the, the Kinect is working at 200 milliseconds. So uh, the delay is a bit uh, wobbly, and <laughs> but uh, it worked. Uh, but yes, um, I'm hoping the, I'm developing also with the OS uh, VR HDK. Uh, so the open source uh, VR uh, headset. Uh, but there is still no uh, 
working. I think there is uh, probably some, some bits w m uh, missing, but uh, the, the tracking for the camera is still not working correctly in Linux. But it's still, it, it works on Windows and uh, it should be usable too. And uh, probably adaptable with any, for the Vive, for uh, the, the, even the, the yeah, <laughs> the, the Sony one, uh, any, anyone which, which has a position tracker can, uh, or even using uh, any proper, uh, um, professional uh, tracking system uh, or, or the Kinect or they can combine actually. Okay, any more questions? No? Thank you very much. <laughs>